Hallelujah. We command the gates of this week, this day, to lift up their heads, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. He is the King of glory. Lift up your heads, all ye gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. He is the King of glory. I welcome you, dear beloved, to a new week. It's 6.40 in the a.m. And it's on the 3rd of May, 2021. It's Mission Monday. And we thank God for His goodness, His mercy, His love, His loving kindness. And even for the opportunity for us to gather like this, to share the scripture and to pray. It's a joy. It's a delight. For you who are joining us across the nations, for the people in Korea who are already in midday, for the people in New Delhi, the people uh, in the UK who are trailing at around 3 in the morning, and the people in, the, in Europe who are one hour behind us, Europe, uh, we have uh, Paris, we have the people of Geneva. We also thank God for the people of Somalia, we are riding on the same time. We thank God for the people in Jerusalem, we are riding on the same time. Kuwait, the same time. Iraq, the same time. Iran. We thank God for the people in Karachi, in Pakistan. We thank God for the nations. And we thank God for the people in Mozambique, in South Africa. We thank God for the people in Pretoria, our brother Lucky Poteka. We bless the Lord for the people in Nigeria, our sister Juliet, our brother Jonathan in Abuja. We thank God for all of this beloved of the Lord, not forgetting Elder Samuel in Lagos. So as we start, the word of the Lord says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23, I received from the Lord what I also gave unto you. The night the Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread and when he had given thanks, he said, this is my body which is for you. Do this every time you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We bless the Lord for this opportunity for us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rebo Santreza Kaba. We thank God. We give you glory. Hallelujah. As we start the Lord's table, we invite all the grace that comes with that. We invite the presence of the Lord to go with us. We invite every benefit of proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes. We also pray for them that are not able to do this. Holy Communion. We do it on their behalf and pray. Let the benefits of the communion come upon them, Lord. Those that are backsliding. Those, Lord, that are sick in the hospital. Lord God, those that are in a place where they can't even pray for themselves. We pray for them. We ask that your grace will come. We ask that your power will come. We ask that new strength will come and that you will be renewed in you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So there we want to break the bread. Let's break the bread. Then we'll invite, we'll invite Sister Rosalind to pray um, for the communion and also pray for the broadcast as we start. And then we shall continue as the Lord helps us. So Sister Rosalind, welcome. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Mm. Our dear Heavenly Father, we bow before you mm. this that day of this new month of uh, May. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of salvation. Yes. We thank you, Father, that it has pleased you that we may proclaim even your death until you come, Lord, even the benefits, my Father, of deliverance, salvation, redemption, reconciliation back to you yes. by the blood of Jesus Christ and by your body that was broken, mm. that you may access your presence. And Father God, even as we do this, Lord, we pray, Father, be glorified, O King of glory. Hide us under your precious blood, each and every one, wherever we are, in our different uh, countries, places, Lord. Father, we pray that as we start this day, may your presence be with us. May your presence be with us, Jehovah God. Protect us and guide us and draw us to yourself mm -hmm. by your word, by your word, my Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So we now partake of the bread together in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's partake of the bread.
same way he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Father, we thank you for the broken body and the blood of Jesus. Lord, as we partake of this cup, we pray that all the benefits of the blood, the protection, the deliverance, the healing, be upon us and cover us, our families, and the peoples in the nations that indeed will glorify your name. So we stay focused and fix our gaze on you. Even as you continue, in Jesus' name we pray. Let's partake of the cup together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want the mighty Silla Brothers. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. Come on, give glory to God. He is the mighty great I am. Hallelujah. We sing it and say. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. You don't think that some of us see the name of Hallelujah. We give worship to you, Lord, Mighty God, the Great I Am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, 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 amen. Hallelujah, amen. We honor you, our Father. There is none who can compare to you. There is none who can compare to you. We honor you, Lord. Lift it up, yo. Hallelujah, amen. Sing hallelujah, amen. Jesus, to you belong all power. Jesus, whenever I call your name, you make a way. Your name is a strong tower, Jesus. Sing it again. Your name is a strong tower, Jesus. To you belong all power, Jesus. Whenever I call your name, you make a way. Your name is a strong tower. Jesus, one more time and say, Your name is a strong tower. Jesus, to you belong all power. Jesus, whenever, whenever I call your name, you make a way. Your name is a strong tower. Jesus. Father, we thank you that you are a strong tower. We thank you that you are a mighty God, the great I am. I want us to start by praying. I want you to pray for yourself that the Lord will open your eyes to see wonderful things out of the law of God. Reading the scripture is one thing, but the Lord to open your eyes so that you can begin to see in the spirit. And then also I want you to pray that the Lord will cause us indeed to hear from the Spirit concerning the intercessor's renewal of strength. Because the place of prayer is a place of work. And the place of work requires energy. Because there's a time when the body can get weak or the spirit can also be a bit challenged in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's start praying by telling God, um, Father, open the eyes of my spirit. Open the ears of my spirit in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, Father, we pray that you may open the eyes of my spirit, O God. Open my ears, O God, to hear from you, O God, that I may hear from you, King of glory. 
open my eyes, open my ears, Lord, to hear from you, O God, in the name of Jesus, Lord Jesus. Lord, that you may help me, Lord God, to hear from you, O God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, indeed, you'll open our ears, our spiritual ears. The Lord, you give us the focus, O God, that you keep us uh, safe and secure, waiting and walking by you. Hallelujah. Today is Mission Monday, and we just want to pray over the many souls that have been won using this, um, you know, this day that God gave it to me and said, on Monday shall shall go. And um, we just want to thank God because I've been to over 24 counties, and God has been so great. And we want to pray for the souls of men. Wherever they have been born again, including the hospital where I was, where I got this mark from the ventilator. And I know that God is faithful because he snatched me from the jaws of death with a reason. It's not just because I was any good. So many people, even some anointed people, pastors, bishops, big, big names in the spirit. But they did not come back. And the Lord gave me the grace to come back. I humble at His presence. And um, I also bless the Lord for giving a, us a movement in the nations. For servants of God that have been revived to pray. Even over India. You know, India is going through a very challenging time. Over 400,000 cases in a day of COVID-19. We also want to pray for in thanksgiving for nations like Rwanda in Africa that have only recorded 25,000 cases. Kenya is around 160 going above there. And we know that God is able to stop the enemy from snatching people without Jesus. This army, it's a delight, it's a joy for someone to die in the Lord. But for someone to die without the Lord is a tragedy. Or for a believer, ule ameokoka na anazungusha na zungusha na kwa wokovu. That is the the worst kind of Christianity, where you are a Christian and you are not a Christian. You are an unbelieving believer, and you know very well that you are on the broad highway, headed the same direction as those people that are not saved. Those people who've never even had the gospel, who are murderers, who are vile, who are slanderers. The same, 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 same plan. Can you pray for yourself? Can you pray over this mission Monday? That even you, wherever you are, you will, have, you will be in a mission Monday. That God will cause you to begin to open your mouth and tell people about Jesus. So some of you are too private. Your Jesus is personal. You don't want to share him with anybody. And you know, God has called all of us to share about the gospel because he does not delight in the death of a sinner. So all these deaths we are seeing in India and where, if they are in the Lord, it's a delight. But if they are not in the Lord, it's a tragedy. Ah, I want us to thank God for Rwanda. And then we pray for the souls of men. Hallelujah. Father, we remember the nation of Rwanda. Lord, this nation, you have watched over it. Lord, you have kept it safe from big spreading in large numbers. Lord, it's a little nation. But Lord, with great strength. We begin to pray for the church in Rwanda. Oh God, that you may empower the church in Rwanda. Lord, that they will arise in thanksgiving over Africa and the continent, oh God, and begin to pray. Ah, come on, pray for Rwanda. Lift up your voice. Tell God, thank you for this nation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for Jamaica in the Caribbean. If at all it had passed even 50,000 cases, Jamaica would be completely wiped out by this disease because there are not so many people there. But God has a church in Jamaica, has a church in Trinidad and Tobago, has a church in, in Sao Paulo, he has a church in Brazil. He has a church in Colombia. Jesus is in Lima, Peru. Jesus is working in Brazil. Jesus is working in Moyale in Kenya. He's working in Garissa. 
are. Father, you are sweet. I thank you that you are in every nation, every corner, the 40 and 7 counties of Kenya. You are working each one of them. Father, we want to pray that you will show yourself strong. Even over Kajiado County, Father. We pray over Kajiado. The Lord, you will continue showing yourself strong. We pray, Father God, over Narok. And we thank you, Lord, for Taita and Taveta. We thank you, Lord, for Bungoma and Kakamega. We thank you for Makweni and Matakos. We thank you, King of Glory, for Nairobi and its leadership. Oh, Rakabo Bronika, intercessors in the 40 and 7 counties, arise! Do not feel intimidated by what's happening around you. Arise! Do not feel crushed, oh, beloved of the Lord in Nigeria. Arise in Somalia. Somalia has a church. It has intercessors. We thank God for the church in Somalia, in Hargeisa, Somaliland. We pray over the church. Strengthen the church, our Father. Strengthen the church, our Father. Strengthen the church, our Father. Oh my God. We pray for the intercessors across different diaspora nations. The Lord, they will not get tired. The Lord, even them that are getting into this journey of 150 days of Psalms, the remaining 47 chapters, Lord, let them be full of strength and capacity. Mm. Father, we thank you for the people in Korea and our sister Celeste. May you give her favor. Open doors of favor upon Celeste in the name of Jesus. Over Celeste, you know God. Open doors of favor. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. We honor you for this and we glorify your name. Psalm 103. We continue and we stay focused. You know, the Holy Spirit was reminding me because there's so much that he revealed to me and I was asking him, so how do I get it across, Lord? How do I help the people? Because sometimes I see people that are walking in the Broadway and the response from the Holy Spirit was one that I was not expecting. Because he says, flee from these ones. He said, go after the lost. The ones that are in salvation and that are going round and round and round. Some of them are going and I said, Lord, but you, you say about every soul should not be lost. He said, flee from them. Flee. Literally. That's not the thing in the area that I want you to focus. The Lord said, focus on my word and focus on the lost. And that's what exactly I'm going to be doing because uh, one thing that I noticed is that people and human beings particularly are very, very strange when it comes to the spirit because they all agree that life and death is in the spirit. But they choose death willingly. It's the most difficult thing to understand. That human beings understand that there is eternal life and eternal death. But they choose eternal death. So the kingdom of darkness is targeting spiritual death. Leave alone the death physically. Spiritual death of people. Of pastors. Of churches. Exciting them with money. Exciting them with building projects. Exciting them with uh, media stations. And the church stops praying and starts chasing those physical things. And the church now becomes about that ministry that you now have. It stops being about Jesus. And in that process, you come up with your own list of rules, your own list of things that are independent of the Bible. And while you are doing that, the enemy is killing spiritually. People are not praying. People are just doing what pastor is saying. People are just doing what ap uh, apostle is saying. And without your knowledge, the enemy is creeping in, killing spiritually, stealing spiritually, destroying spiritually. Entire churches scattered completely. And the new people that come, they think it's now a new church. But the pastor knows very well what happened. So the Lord said, have nothing to do with them. Continue with the mission. Bring those who have never had the gospel and that are happy to receive salvation. 
And I said, Father, as for the rest, I will just pray for them. Pray for them and give them the message. And then they will make a decision based on that. Because the decision for you to walk in righteousness or to walk in wickedness is a personal choice. Is a personal choice whether you're going to go deeper in prayer or whether you're going to go sleepy. Whether you're going to sleep and eat a huge ugali every day without fasting for hours and days and months. Hallelujah. You only fast when you have needs, your own personal needs. And then the enemy comes sometimes and tricks churches to think that it's because of their fasting that that thing has come. But sometimes some of the things that you are receiving as answers, they are not from the Lord. Because you are not in the spirit, you will think it's from the Lord, but it's not. So the most important thing for the intercessors is for you to renew your strength. Hallelujah. Today I have only um, um, uh, an hour and a half now. So a word is enough for the wise. I believe you have received that in Jesus' name. Psalm 103 of David. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my innermost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he abhor his angel forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for all who fear him. For those who fear him, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on so the Lord has, has compassion on those who fear him. Verse 14 of Psalm 103. For he knows how we are, for he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone. Its place remembers no more. And its place it remembers it no more. From everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him. And his righteousness with their children's children. With those who keep his covenant <clears throat> and remember to obey his precepts. Verse 19. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Hallelujah. And his kingdom rules over all. Verse 20. Praise the Lord. You his angels. You mighty ones who do his bidding. Who obey his word. Praise the Lord. All his heavenly hosts. You his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord. All his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord my soul. Is the last thing that the psalmist says. The psalmist introduces to us. A realm we do not see. He shows us. An area we are not aware about. He shows us an area that is alive and active. An area with a lot of activity. And this is the spirit realm. Where the Lord has placed mighty ones who do his bidding. The angels of the Lord have been dispatched for us. The angels of the Lord are our portion as believers. Glory. Glory. That in the book of Luke, we read chapter 22 and we see where the Lord Himself is saying to us as intercessors in verse 46 Why are you sleeping? He asked them, Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. That you must understand that prayer is an activity that is very strenuous. And in the realm of the spirit as an intercessor, you must know how to renew your strength. Engage. Luke chapter 22 verse 43. One of the ways to receive your strength 
is from the angels. That it says an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. So when Nemo is praying, she can pray and tell God, Lord, send me an angel to strengthen me. Because it's legal for you to receive angelic support. It's like the military when they go with the physical soldiers on the land and then when they get there, they realize that the battle on the ground can only be dealt with by air support. So what they do is they have a radio call that they make a call and they say, uh, requesting air support, requesting air support, requesting air support. And the Air Force, when they receive that message, they quickly get into their helicopters full of the missiles and full of the guns and they have a man by the window and they have the helicopter go up and when it goes up they look down at the enemy and the enemy has nowhere to run because they have the helicopter so it starts by destroying the big guns that can kill can that can destroy the aircraft it goes straight for the anti-aircraft area boom 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 sends out a miss missile Shua! it goes and bombs the camp where the military, the, where the, the terrorists are hiding, they are sent for, Yami, they are bombarded from the sky. While they are doing that, probably there is something they are doing on the sea also. So they call in the Navy, Navy support, Navy support, send in, send in the Navy support. So there are some Navy SEALs swimming in the water, hallelujah. For me, I am in that department of Navy SEALs. I love those guys. You just get in the water and they move like, Quietly in the night, quietly, quietly, quietly. Actually, in my swimming, I love getting their drills from the internet and just using those drills to do exercises because they are military. And military, like I told you, they don't involve themselves with the affairs of the civilians. So you as an intercessor, you are a military kind of a person. You don't, have, you don't compare, you do not involve yourself with the things of the world you must involve yourself with the things of the spirit so if you see conversations that are in the physical that are in the flesh child support conversations relationship conversations about worldly affairs you know have nothing to do with those kind of foolish arguments that's what the bible says Cause them foolish arguments. And he says, have nothing to do with them. Flee from those kind of arguments. You should not be in a funny group there trying to preach to people that have already given their hearts to the devil. They are agents. You cannot throw your pals to the pigs, says the scripture. So you are better off looking for the lost than the lost that have been found and then they get lost while they are found. The worst kind of thing that can happen to you as a believer is to get confused when you are already born again and you start running after the devil. You are committing sexual immorality yet you are a born again believer. How? How are you a born again believer now? You are stealing, you are lying, you are accusing your neighbors falsely and yet you are a believer. The Lord just said to us in Revelation 3 that I am about to spit you out of my mouth. So likewise for the intercessor, in as much as we love all souls to come to the Lord, sometimes we will not be involved in petty arguments, in foolish talk, in coarse joking. No. A believer who is walking in a worldly way, completely traveling the worldly broad path, engaging themselves with worldly music and all the things those kind of believers should not worry you let them be with their lord he will deal with them just give a word of rebuke if at all that's only god brings them into your path but now if you make it your mission and that's not what god has called you they will derail you you will be entering into arguments tiresome draw unnecessary enemies and the like especially on social media you need to use wisdom and you need to focus and remain on the straight and narrow path. So the psalmist has opened for us a realm for us to understand that God is merciful. He forgets not, um, you know, when you speak to your soul, 
You say, forget the, praise the Lord my soul and forget not all his benefits. So your soul has a memory. It's called the mind. And you have the capacity to cause your soul to focus 100% on the Lord. Focus 100%. Don't focus on your job. Don't focus on it. Focus on the Lord. Then your job will align itself. Praise the Lord. It says who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. In this period after I came from hospital, that you have to stay away from people and stay away from even going to work, just staying. The Lord has taught me this, that the ego goes to a mountain and removes all his feathers by itself, bleeding by itself, picking, plucking the feathers by itself. And when the ego does that, it can't fly. The ego has to stay there until those feathers grow back. So it is in a fast because it cannot eat. It cannot hunt. The kidogo food it has, that's all. Sometimes God will be merciful to eat and maybe a, sn a snake will just be passing by and you know, the ego will step on the snake and bite the head off and it will eat even without flying because that's God. God will make provision for the ego. He'll make provision for even the smallest fish that is about to be swallowed by the whale. God will provide for it so that it has enough nutrients for the whale. God will make provision even for the flowers that you are about to cut and put in your vase. God will make provision for the rocks and make them to shine. I see some rocks in, when I go up country that have some shiny dust in there and I ask God, how did you put that in there? You know, when you look at the marvelous wonders of God, you look at Mount Kilimanjaro and you see on top of it there's snow and it's a sunny day and the snow is still there. You see God's wonders and the works of the Lord are mighty. So when the psalmist comes now towards the end and tells us something, that from everlasting to everlasting, Lord's love is with those who fear Him. He, I want to fear you, Lord, so that your love will remain with me. Ah, glory to God. It says the Lord has established His throne in heaven. In Revelation 4, we'll be seeing this throne. So we need to move quickly because our time today is going. We have a timer. We are not joking. We are now shooting straight. So I want you to pay attention because... The things that we are saying here are spiritually rich and reaching and they will change your thoughts and they will cause you to love the Lord more. So he says, praise the Lord, you angels. He says the Lord, you his angels. He says that David understands that they are angels. And these angels, they listen to a human command. So he writes it in the scripture and says, praise the Lord, you angels. You mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. The angels of the Lord obey the word of the Lord to the letter. You cannot cause an angel of the Lord to sin. No, it's not possible. Heavenly hosts, the sun, the moon, the stars, they do his will. It's there. Praise the Lord, all his works, rocks, minerals, plants. Hyacinth, fish, bats, everything is the creation of God. He says, praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. And then he says, lastly, praise the Lord, my soul. So constantly you must remember to command your soul. To tell your soul what to do. Like I mentioned in another broadcast, I said, a lot of us are making one mistake. They put the feelings first. Then they put uh, the faith and then they put the truth as the end. In the realm of the spirit, you must understand that there is, you know, God can reveal to you something. He can reveal to you that I need to work in your life. There are too many covenants. Probably you are from a warrior family. Your father was a warrior. He went on cattle raid. He killed your grandfather, 
tortured people and killed them for cattle. Now, this kind of a lineage, now you are born again. You need now to run towards the Lord for deliverance. It says in the book of Obadiah 17, On this mountain shall be deliverance. It will be holy, and the house of Jacob will receive its deliverance. So, you might start following somebody who is going to be getting understanding about, you might even get somebody with divination. You might think it's the spirit of God, but it's divination. So the persons begin to tell you, you know, your brother is the one doing this to you. Your sister is the one who is a witch. All these things. But these people are diviners. So you start pursuing the wrong spiritual angle of the problem. The right spiritual angle of the problem is to command everything around it to praise the Lord. Ah. Nothing has ever stopped, nothing has ever stood from praise. When you praise God, nothing. Ask Jehoshaphat in First Chronicles chapter 20. We'll be talking about that another time. In the interest of time, we need to go to Proverbs chapter 9. It says, Wisdom has built a house. She has set up its seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servants and she calls from the highest point of the city. Let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, Come, eat my food and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave my simple ways and you will live. Walk in the way of insight. Whoever corrects a mocker invites insults. Whoever rebukes the wicked incurs abuse. Verse 8. Do not rebuke mockers or they, and they will hit it. Or they will hate you. Rebuke the wise. And they will love you. You see this proverb. Is what I was just telling you. You see a sister. Who is going against the word of God. You go and instruct her. And tell her. Sister you are going against the word of the Lord. And then she tells you. Me I know my salvation. Me and my God we know. Hey. So you have just rebuked a mocker. And they will hate you. Instant. But if you rebuke the wise. Come and rebuke a wise one. And say ah. My sister. What you are doing. Is not glorifying God. Would you kindly. Just take some time to bring repentance. And immediately she tells you. Yes my sister. Thank you so much for pointing that out. That's the wise. And she will love you for it. A brother should rebuke a brother. But at times you get, as in your revel, God might release even people from different genders. But now, you must be able to tap into the spirit to understand, is this one a mocker or is this one a wise person? Because like I told you what the Holy Spirit told me. He said, Malcolm, do not waste time with these ones. Don't waste time, kabisa. He said they are choosing to mix themselves with the world. Leave them alone. Go for the lost. Remember, can you imagine the Lord telling you stop praying about something? He can do that. He's done that to me several times. He says don't pray about it. Just leave it. He says do another thing. And I go to the other thing. I see the same thing Jesus did. When he came to Galilee, the Galileans, the, the, the people of Nazareth, they did not receive him as a prophet. That's why I said if Tyre had, had received the many miracles that, that, that has happened in, in you, it would have already transformed long enough. So the prophet has no honor in his hometown. Is Jesus himself who said because he saw. So you need to focus your energy on Jesus. To the level that the people that are lost will be attracted to him without you saying a word. And the moment you say a word, they are getting saved without any manner of challenge or struggle. Instruct the wise and they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous and they will add to their learning. So there is need for wisdom in the approach, especially of the rebellious Christian as an intercessor. It's not your business to do that business. 
Let the pastors handle them. Let the people that are pastoring the churches deal with those kind of people. If they do not respond according to Corinthians, then have totally nothing to do with them and actually remove them, expel them from the assembly of believers. That's what the scripture says. But nowadays, you see, we are having tea and we are mixing up with the world. We are bringing totally secular and immoral women to talk to our young ladies before their marriage and they introduce demons on their, on their marriage bed. They tell them, use this gadget on him. It will be very exciting. The minute they do that, they open the door for demons in that marriage. Less than one year, the man starts cheating on the family. Because the door is open, or even the woman starts becoming weird and the things she's doing, now she cannot be even satisfied by her husband. Because there's a demon that was introduced, because what? These believers have become so elite that they can tolerate Satan to come and talk to them. They can invite Satan into a church to come and give them wisdom. For what? Do you know that Satan has a lot of books on how to make wealth? He knows. He knows where to get money. He knows. He's the God of the air. So if your heart is being driven by material things, he will catch you like a fly in a web of a spider very quickly. And you will never have enough, by the way. There's a scripture that we read that says, the one who loves money never has enough. <laughs> Even I've seen myself I've worked with for people and with people that totally their life is beating about money that even their life if you cut off the supply to the bank they will fall dead on the spot you'll understand how did he die just like that because his heart is connected to the world and the money and the what and the what that's why when the lockdown comes some of these people don't even make it they just go you see, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For through wisdom, your days will be many, and your years will be added. Glory to God. Your years will be added to your life. If you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. If you are a mocker, you alone will suffer. Folly is an unruly woman. She is simple and knows nothing. She sits at the door of her house on a seat at the highest point of the city, calling out to those who pass by, who go straight on their way. Let all who are simple come to my house, says Folly. To those who have no sense, she says, stolen water is sweet. Food eaten in secret is delicious. Uh -huh. All of you guys who gained weight, eating in car, eh? eating alone in car, I was one of them. I used to go into a fast food shop and I would buy uh, some fast food and maybe chicken and chips and then I will buy another packet of chicken and chips now I have the one for going for home and then I had another one for eating just before I go so I carry the one I'm eating before I go and I eat it in the car secretly and I feel good when I'm eating that one <laughs> food detail is secret is delicious so when I get home I deliver the one which I've brought. <laughs> then my wife goes like, Ah, Baba, hey, today you brought us chicken. So whatever she had cooked, she puts it on a plate, and then on the side, she adds the chicken, another chicken that, uh, you know, the, on top of the one which I've brought. So I end up eating like half a chicken, all by myself. And then I eat the food from home. And then, you know, I eat two, I drink two big mugs of tea. Ah! And I sleep. I'm telling you, my friend, within no time, I put on so much weight. And that's why we say I decided, I said, no, uh -uh, something must change. That was in 2017. And because of that, God used that to help me out of this illness. Because he found my body able to take a challenge. You know, my blood pressure was okay. Everything, the blood sugar was fine. And the lungs were used to swimming. The old lungs that were removed. I could swim for three hours. Just swimming and swimming. I didn't know that the Lord was preparing me. For a burial. <laughs> for ascending into the spirit realm. Getting to understand so much. And he says, do not throw the pulse to the pigs. The Lord clearly said to me. Mm -mm. 
Do not just go telling everybody what I have showed you. Hmm. But I will share it here in these videos. Proverbs 9.18 says, But little do they know that the dead are there, that our guests are deep in the realm of the dead. What a beautiful way to get instructions from the book of Proverbs. That you will always find now, in your conversations with people, you always have a proverb to tell them. Because you are spending time with God's word. There is a proverb that will apply to what you are saying. You will see a proverb that is making sense about your situation. Ecclesiastes 8. Like yesterday I remember instructing one of my friends and I said, Ah, it's better to go to a house of mourning than to a house of feasting. And my brother went to this place, the house of mourning, and they received a lot of comfort from him. Because he went there, there was nobody else. And this is weeks after the burial. So, weeks after the burial, people just go away. Many of them go away. And the people who are bereaved are left without anybody to help them. Just are overcome the grief. So, for you, it is better to go to the house of money. Don't run for the burial. Just wait. Now the numbers are reduced. Watch online, then wait. Then when people have forgotten, go visit that family. Go physically. Visit. Take shopping. Take love. Take good memories. Take presence of God. And when you reach there, don't talk about so much about the dead person. Just talk about the living. This is what happens. The dead are dead. They know nothing. Even if you do 200 posts on Facebook, they will never read. They are gone. So if you love somebody today, post about them now. When they are alive, tag them when they can read. When they die, they will not look at any of the posts. If at all Malcolm David Seale has impacted you now, write to him. Tell him. Post on his wall. Like my sister Celestine from Korea. She made a video. She said, this, this journey has impacted my life. You know. So, for you, you know it's secretly there. When, when the person was in high ICU, I could not see you. I could not hear you. All my friends, I, for, I could not do anything until the Lord gave my, back my consciousness. And then I could post something on Facebook and so on. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Appreciate your people today, not tomorrow. Tell them now, not yesterday. Send them help when they need it. Somebody is unwell, they need your help at that time. When they die, they'll not need your help. They have crossed over to the other side. You cannot go there. You cannot send money there. You cannot send help there. You cannot go there yourself. And there is no place called in between. There is life and there is death. Choose life today when you still can by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And those of you believers who are toying around with sin, know this, that one who is stiff-necked after many rebukes comes to destruction without remedy. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 1. You must know that is a serious thing. You don't toy around with the world, please. Don't joke around with the world. Don't invite your world, the world into your table. If you invite the world, the world will come in and sit. And you, a friendship with the world is enmity with God. The world has so many things to tell us. So many things the world has for us. Pro Ecclesiastes 8. Who is like the wise? Who knows the explanation of things? A person's wisdom brightens their face. And changes its hard appearance. Obey the king's command, I say, because you took an oath before God. Don't be in a hurry to leave the king's presence. Don't stand for a bad cause, for he will do whatever he pleases. It says again in verse 4 of Ecclesiastes, Since a king, since a king's word is supreme, who can say to him, what are you doing? Verse 5 of Ecclesiastes, Whoever obeys his command, will come to know harm. Welcome Jeanette, welcome Joshua Galoro, welcome Solomon, 
Welcome, my sister Afia. Welcome, my little sister Miriam. God bless you all for joining. It says, verse 5, Whoever obeys his command will come to no harm. And the wise heart will know the proper time and procedure. Like I mentioned to you, when I was taken ill and taken to the hospital, I understood that this requires a procedure. It requires time. So I knew that I will not be in a hurry. I will not be anxious. I will just wait on the Lord. A wise heart will know the proper time and procedure. For there is a proper time and procedure for every matter, though a person may be weighed down by misery. Since, verse 7 of Ecclesiastes 8, since no one knows the future, who can tell someone else what is to come? As no one has power over the wind to command to contain it, so no one has power over the time of their death, as no one is discharged in the time of war. So wickedness will not release those who practice it. Verse 9, all this I saw as I applied my mind to everything done under the sun. There is a time when a man lords it over others to his own heart. Then I saw the wicked buried, those who used to come and go from the holy place and receive praise in the city where they did this. This too is meaningless. Verse 11, when the sentence of a crime is not quickly carried out, people's hearts are filled with schemes to do wrong. This word is actually for you magistrates and judges and police officers and prosecutors. You need to understand this word is very, very key. That when the sentence for a crime is not quickly carried out, the people's hearts are filled with schemes to do wrong. And they say, the next time they catch that thief, they are going to kill him. Going to kill him. This is what happens in Africa. When they catch a thief, they burn the thief. Because when the sentence of the crime is not quickly carried out, the people now are filled with schemes to do wrong. But if the justice system is working properly, then they are able to calm the hearts of the people. That's why you see some cases are attract a lot of public interest and the people are gain anxiety and, and they come and stand outside the court, many of them, because it's a big case that even the, the judge says because this has public interest, we are going to adjourn until this day so that it at least releases the hearts of the people. It says verse 12, although a wicked person who commits a hundred crimes may live a long time, I know that it will go better with those who fear the Lord, who are reverent before him. Yet because the wicked do not fear God, it will not go well with them. And their days will not lengthen like a shadow. Verse 14, there is something else meaningless that occurs on earth. The righteous will get what the wicked deserve and the wicked will get what the righteous deserve. This too, I see, is meaningless. So I commend the enjoyment of life. Because there is nothing better for a person under the sun than to eat and be glad, then joy will accompany them in their toil all the days of the life God has given them under the sun. This proverb says that I commend the enjoyment of life. This now is not enjoyment of life does not mean you go for disco and you take drugs and you start drinking. That's not enjoyment of life. In chapter 5, we read and say that the Lord occupies their hearts with gladness. The enjoyment of life is that God gives it to you as a gift to enjoy life. To enjoy life. To enjoy life. In the in the in the in the uh, in the in the in the in the script of the Bible and in the in the application of God's word, that's the beautiful way that you are able to enjoy a meal of fish. Enjoy, eat eat fish. Fish is good. In fact, let me give you a secret. Fish broth is the most powerful soup that you can ever have. If you can have the fish head and the bones and all that, you just boil them. And if you are in Africa. I could re recommend the Nile patch for you. But now I don't know if you have Nile patch out of Africa. You have salmon and a lot of those kind of foods there. And, but I mean, fish broth is powerful. Just take it like tea. And in no time, God is giving you strength. Especially if you are coming out of a sickness like COVID-19. You need to take food. 
you need to take soups, you need to rest, and you need to be with God more. That is the only way. You know, I, someone was writing to me and saying, Oh, thank you so much for encouraging us. I also got sick and so on. Then I said to them, Draw closer to Jesus. This is what I said to you. If you are sick of COVID-19 and you are healing or you are in quarantine, stop thinking it's the medicine that's getting you well. The moment you think it's the medicine, you will stay there with the medicine and the test and the medicine and the test. I know someone who did up to six tests. More of Jesus. They will stay there for longer. You stay at the stage. They ask you, what are you waiting for? Which bus are you waiting for? Ah, I say, I'd rather, I'd rather, if his presence does not go with me, I will not move from here. Literally. Which bus are you going with? <laughs> There's a story uh, I, I read somewhere about a man uh, who was traveling and he got into the bus and when he got into the bus, they were eaters of flesh and drinkers of blood. There was one old man who was purposed that this bus will somersault and everybody will die. So the bus had started going. This man was seated at the back. And then he just coughed and the back said, <coughs> let us pray. And everybody in the bus, apart from the old man who was the eater of flesh and drinker of blood, he had done that business for over 17 years. Just causing accidents, he takes blood, then he disappears. I mean, they are there physically, those people. Here in Africa, we have a lot of things in the realm of the spirit that happen like that. Even in the, U, in, the, in, the, in the U.S. and all these places, you just see all of a sudden a quiet neighborhood, nothing wrong, active shooter, pa, 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 shooting people. You think that is just terrorism? No! Those are called eaters of flesh and drinkers of blood. So this man coughed in the back and said, <clears throat> let us pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I cover this bus with the blood of Jesus. I pray that you give us safety as we go. And we thank you for the driver. We thank you that we love a journey that is full of your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So when this man had the prayer, he was startled. And now we went, they, they went on up to the place called a black spot. If you are traveling, like for me, I've been doing a lot of travel in the Mission Mondays. Every time I reach a place, I see the sign of the skull and bones put by the roads uh, highway. I think they should, they should change that thing. Because they put a sign of skull and bones and they write black spot. What that simply means, that's an area that demons have assigned. So the believers need to pray. And I thank God that going to Narok, there are about three such places. And the Holy Spirit has led me like more than four times to pray and sometimes to do prayer actions there to do something there just one man not even a big crowd pray and totally destroy the plan of the enemy so when they go to a black spot the vehicle did not overturn this eater of flesh was so disturbed they came out from that bus they took another one and the eater of flesh also came on the same bus <laughs> As they continued to go, there was a cop at the back. Let us pray. <laughs> the old man was like, ah, this man said, pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. We cover this bus again with the blood. We thank you as we continue to go. Be with us. Cover us in Jesus' name. We pray, amen. This man was not aware of what's happening in the spirit. The bus went... This is a black spot, the area that the demons had poured blood and they were ready now to harvest more blood. The bus went without any problems. Ah! Now, when they got out of this bus, they got into a smaller one now, I think, which was going to the next town where this man was going. Less people, about eight. Again, he sat at the back. The eater of flesh sat in the middle, the same place, the, another place that he wanted now. When he sat there, just before the man did the cough, this eater of flesh now was agitated. He said, this is a free country. You should not be praying in the, in the bus. You pray your prayer in your heart. And now he was agitated. 
Now, the, there was a lady who was also an intercessor. She sat next to this man. She said, you pray your prayer. Let him pray his own. We will say amen to both of them. So what's the problem? Let him pray his prayer. Go, go on, do your prayer. So the man said, Father, in the name of Jesus, we cover this bus. <laughs> Third bus, no mutilation of flesh, no drinking of blood. It reached. Now when they got out of the bus, he started walking away from the destination. This old man ran after him. He said, what's wrong with you? I want to know who you are. And then now he explained to himself who he was. And then this is how the story ended. You know, the man, a seed was planted in his life. And many years down the line, that eater of flesh, drink of blood, he received the Lord Jesus as his personal savior. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it's good for us to remain in the spirit. He says, Ecclesiastes 8, 17. Then I saw that all God has done, no one can comprehend what goes on under the sun. Despite all their efforts to search it out, no one can discover its meaning. Even if the wise claim they know, they can't really comprehend it. Hallelujah. Good to see you, Dorothy, Danny Sodongo, Sister, my dear mom, Emily. It's Mission Monday. We bless the Lord. Make where you are Mission Monday. As in, do something today for the Lord. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 27. A lament about Tyre. Renew your strength as an intercessor. Ask the Lord to give you grace to continue with the race as you seek his face. I told you to get a notebook. <laughs> Ask the Lord to strengthen you as you with grace as you run the race and seek his face continually. Indeed, never underestimate the power of prayer. Prayer is a weapon that cannot... You know, I saw another video. The Indians are destroying their idols. And I'm happy about that because God will turn to them and show compassion. His eyes are on the faithful and that they may dwell in the land. That is Psalm 1 verse 6. So remain faithful in all you do. Purpose to be faithful. Ezekiel 27. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, take up a lament concerning Tyre. Say to Tyre, situated at the gateway to the sea, merchant of peoples on many coasts, this is what the sovereign Lord says. You Tyre, I am perfect in beauty. Your domain was on the high seas. Your builders brought your beauty to perfection. They made all your timbers of juniper from Senna. They took a cedar from Lebanon to make a mast for you. Of oaks from Bashan, they made your oars. Of cypress wood from the coast of Cyprus, they made your deck adorned with ivory. Fine embroidered linen from Egypt was your sail and served as your banner. Your awnings were of blue and purple from the coast of Elisha. Elisha, men of Sidon and Avad where your oarsmen, your skilled men, Tyre, were aboard as your sailors. Veteran craftsmen of Byblos were on board as shipwrights to calc your seams. All the ships of the sea and their sailors came along to trade for your wares. Ten men of Persia, Lydia, and Put served as soldiers in your army. They hung their shields and helmets on your walls, bringing you their splendor. Men of Avad and Helic guarded your walls on every side. Men of Gaman were in your towers. They hung their shields around your walls. They brought your beauty to perfection. Tashish did business with you because of your great wealth of goods. They exchanged silver, iron, tin, and lead for your merchandise. Greece, Leba, uh, Tubal, and Meshach did business with you. They traded human beings and articles of bronze for your wares. Men of Beth, Togama, exchanged chariot horses, cavalry horses, and mules for your merchandise. The men of Rhodes traded with you, and many coastlands were your customers. They paid you with ivory tusks and ebony, 
Aram did business with you because of your many products. They exchanged turquoise, purple, fabric, embroidered work, fine linen, coral, and rubies for your merchandise. Judah and Israel traded with you. They exchanged wheat from minas and confections, honey, olive oil, and balm for your wares. Damascus did business with you because of your many products and great wealth of goods. They offered wine from Elbo, wool from Zaha, and casks of wine from Izal in exchange for your wares. Rout, iron, cassia, and calmus, Dedan traded in saddle blankets with you. Mm. Tyre, Arabia, and all the princes of Keda were your customers. They did business with you in lambs, rams, and goats. The merchants of Sheba and Rama traded with you for your merchandise. They exchanged the finest of all kinds of spices and precious stones and gold. Haran, Kane, and Eden, and merchants of Sheba, Ashur, and Kilmad traded with you. In your marketplace, they traded with you beautiful garments, blue fabric. Hallelujah. Miriam, welcome. Karibu pambelia, kuna viti. Blue fabric, embroidered work, and multicolored rugs with cords twisted and tightly knotted. Verse 25 of Ezekiel 27. The ships of Tarshish serve as carriers for your wares. You are filled with heavy cargo. As you sail the sea, your oarsmen take you out to the high seas. But the east wind, I want you intercessor to note the thing east wind. is one of the weapons of God. The east wind. Miss write it down somewhere because if you do a study on the east wind, you'll understand why sometimes in your prayers you need to command the east wind to come, break to pieces every kind of challenge that you may be having. Mm. The east wind is one of the weapons for the intercessor. Powerful. Don't joke. Your wealth, merchandise and wares. Your marinas, sold sailors and shipwrights. Your merchants and all your soldiers. And everyone else on board will sink into the heart of the sea on the day of your shipwreck. Hallelujah. Hey, Jesus. This kind of scripture, before even I go to verse 28, let me just give you... Um, the application of where you can be able to apply it as you pray for nations. As you deal with the waters, because the waters are very challenging. And I've been praying and asking God, God, when am I going to Mombasa? No, I'm looking forward. I can't wait to go to Mission Monday, Mombasa, and just to relax, you know, and just step on the sand. And ah, this is something I want to do. But the Lord would not let me. For me, it's not a tourism destination. For me, going to that place is not a tourism destination. No way. So I have understanding that I have to keep asking God, when are we going? When are we going, Lord? When? There's once I thought we are going to Mombasa. Then he said, no, I want you to go to Taveta and I want you to go through Kajiado. Mm. We went, 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 got into a place that you remember the journey in February that got me born into a Maasai family in Rombo. God bless that family. God bless my parents. God bless my sisters, my brothers. I have lots of brothers there, lots of sisters there, lot of sons and daughters there. And I thank God for my mom, Mom Rosa. God bless you so much, Mom. We can't wait to see you very soon. So the word of the Lord continues here to say, The shore lands will quake when your sailors cry out. All you handle the oars will abandon their ships, the marinas and all the sailors will stand on the shore. They will raise their voice and cry bitterly over you. They will sprinkle dust on their heads and roll in ashes. They will shave their heads because of you and put on sackcloth. They will weep over you with anguish of soul and with bitter mourning. As they wail and mourn over you, they will take up a lament concerning you. Who was ever silenced like Tyre? Surrounded by the sea. When your merchandise went out on the seas, you satisfied many nations. With your great wealth and many wares, you enriched the kings of the earth. Now you are shattered by the sea in the depths of the waters. Your wares and all your company have gone down with you. All who live in coastlands, 
are appalled at you. Their kings shudder with horror, and their faces are distorted with fear. The merchants among the nations scoff at you. You have come to a horrible end, and will be no more. This lament of Tyre, for the intercessor praying for the nations, need to understand the principles set here. When you are dealing with the waters, you are dealing with the, um, you know, the realm of the spirit. You know, conducting raids. You need to conduct a raid in the spirit and begin to possess your possessions, whatever the enemy has stolen. You, 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 you know. Sometimes we pray prayers that the Holy Spirit is not directing us. When a prayer is for you to pursue, overtake, and recover. It's not a prayer for mercy. Lord have mercy on me that I may be able to. No. It's a prayer of shall I pursue? Yes. Shall, will I recover? Yes. So now you begin to go in the spirit with confidence. And say, Father, your word says that I shall do this, I shall do that, I shall do that. So you need to know the word for you to be able to do this kind of things. And I thank God for you because you are intercessors. God has invested his time on you. You have invested your time on the word of God. Jeanette, you have what it takes to pray for your street corner to change. Now it's summer and people are, you know, summer is approaching. And a lot of people, instead of seeking God, they are seeking sensuality. They are looking towards satisfying their sinful desires. They are not looking at exalting the Lord. Why don't you choose to exalt the Lord? Choose to exalt the Lord. Do not walk around uncovered as a, as a woman. In the name of summer. You know. You are spreading lust everywhere. Giving it to people. Lust, lust, lust. Everywhere you go. Lasting. People are lasting at you. Say, Aini Shauriao. But you, you don't understand. You are a spirit. You are saying Shauriao. They are committing sexual uh, immorality with you. In their, in their hearts. Because you made it a little easier for them. If you are prayerful and you adorn yourself the right way, there is no way that you'll be able to send out lustful spirits. In fact, you'll repel anyone that wants to try and, you know, do this kind of thing. We must move on. A word is enough for the wise. You have understanding as an intercessor, the thing that you need to do is to gain the weapons. East Wind, I've just given you one of them. There are several weapons you can do. The blood of Jesus is another weapon. The name of Jesus is another weapon. Praise is another weapon. Thanksgiving is another weapon. All these are powerful weapons in the spirit. Obedience is the biggest. It's like a tank. When you are walking in obedience. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you're having a battalion with you. It's like a sacrifice for the Lord. Obedience is the greatest thing. Bigger than a sacrifice. It says obedience is better than sacrifice. It says that when you begin to walk with God closely, He gives you instructions and you must keep them. This happens in the spirit. Even the people who join those funny organizations, they will end up having to follow rules of that organization. If they join satanic associations, Satanic associations, others are called the brotherhood, others are called other different names. I don't want to promote them here by mentioning them. My airtime here is very precious. I don't mention names of just people that end up in the lake of fire. We talk about eternal life. We don't, we don't give airtime to the kingdom of darkness. As in, I told you what the Lord told me. And again... Just the same way he told me when I when he told me about India. He says, Don't pray this way. I say, ah, Lord. People are dying in India. So as an intercessor, how should I pray? So another intercessor writes to me, full of tears and crying, and say, Oh, the people are dying in India. Oh. Then the Holy Spirit says, it, can you open our eyes to see the number of believers that are being poured into hell? Poured. It's like sand from a bucket being poured, 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 poured into hell. Simply because of simple things. Unfaithfulness. 
you know, broken promises to the Lord. You said you will be doing this every Monday. You don't. The moment you, you vow before God, know that it's not you and man. It's you and God. So, don't be quick to say things in the presence of God. Gal uh, Ephes uh, Ecclesiastes 5. Don't be quick. Uh -uh -uh. When you go to the presence of God, don't be quick. You know, when I go on my missions, I've gone to places where there was almost a riot. Because the people are saying, come and start a church here. Come, we will give you a place. We will give you a place where you can put the tent and be coming every month. Now listen to the Holy Spirit and say, uh-uh, uh-uh, it's not yet time. Because the Holy Spirit knew, first, I must take you to the black fire. You must see how it looks like. You must experience a near-death experience. You must go near what this thing, people are just playing around with. They, you must go near it. You must smell the last supper with the Lord. The fragrance of that meal. The last supper. And immediately, I smelled that night. I realized in my illness, I had not done any Lord's table. And I wrote to my friends who are praying with me and I said, Please, today spell, just do uh, the Lord's table. Celebrate the Lord's table on my behalf. I cannot do it. You see, the moment that happened, something unlocked in the spirit. The next day, I was able to ask for bread. I never been able to eat anything solid. I asked for bread. And the nurse who brought the bread brought it for me like the way you bring for somebody some illegal stuff. Something illegal. You <laughs> said, Are you sure you're going <laughs> to? If you notice, I'm eating a bigger bread for my Lord's table than the small piece I used to do. Ah, it's good to be alive. God has given me the capacity to eat. Eh? But you have to use wisdom, not so that you don't overeat and then you become in the realm of uh, greed and those things, you know. So I asked for a bread and the bread came. In the morning, my lungs are tired. I can't even speak. The process of the removing of the old lungs is already in process. And the Holy Spirit used to tell me, sleep. You tell me, immediately I do all those things, the doctors put the medicine, what, what. They tell me, sleep. Now I want to do the operation. And let me tell you, when he removed the old lungs, in my eyes, I could see. My spirit eyes, I could see it. I could see the lungs, how they look like. Black, totally black. And I could see a hand that was holding them. But I could see something else. The heart was not out there. Because if the heart was out, then I would not believe it. But the lungs had been plucked out. They were black. Totally black. The Holy Spirit told me, there, what has gone out is unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, sexual immorality, lust, things that you have been carrying, air that you have been breathing. I remember... This once when I was a young boy, I was taken somewhere by my dad where we were going to be protected, you know, like being taken to be protected against evil spirits because uh, it's a culture for us. You know, the places where around the eastern where we have the Kamba tribe. The Kamba tribe is very spiritual, but in the wrong sense. So, those who are not believers, they will take their children to places to protect them. The Holy Spirit showed me, those lungs have gone even with those rituals, those things, places you've gone, lies, what, what. He said, I'm giving you brand new lungs and your heart shall be having the capacity to love more. But now, when, you know, I came out and the Lord is showing me all these things. Even showing me clearly, somebody who is misleading his congregation. Totally. Misleading the congregation, totally. He's playing something that you are... Eh? Then the Holy Spirit comes again now, this morning, and tells me, leave them alone. Don't even make that, that your occupation. 
don't make the occupation if at all they are deciding to to bring the entire world into the church is not your job what you do go after the lost focus and when you get the lost make sure they don't go in those particular churches where mamboe hawakoko na manyani apes let me tell you something intercessor nations have gatekeepers the nation of kenya the gatekeeper is an ape because they say that creation began here they associate this nation with evolution prehistoric sites when i'm traveling i keep seeing them i'm i'm looking for the day the lord is sending me there i don't know when he sent me to kapemburia uh, heroes uh, heroes things where they had the, the the where they were holding the president of the nation and all this send me there and say pray for the families of these people by name talk to god about builder kagia talk to god about jomo kenyatta talk to god about achenga neko's family talk to god about he told me that and that day before i left there the person who was watching over that kapenguria museum gave his life to christ an administration policeman gave his life to jesus and there was a blackout during that time so that god's purposes must be done Immediate, immediately I finished, the lights came back on. Then I understood. Hey, Papa, you make me a hitman. Now you've made me a commando. Hey, my Lord. I just show up in a place. Boom, for the kingdom of darkness. And you are out. You see, I see myself in, you know, like helicopters. We are running out of the place. And the place is burning, like in those action movies I used to watch. Long time. Revelation chapter 4. Let me, let me take you to the throne of heaven. Because as an intercessor, you cannot pray your prayers to a place you don't know. How can you take things to a place you don't know? You must know a place for you to take their things there. You must know the person you are addressing. That's why you need to know more of God this week. Purpose, eh? Eva. Now let us number to kweke kwa altar ujue sazile tunakuja on when we are going off. You need to know. Now we are strictly on two hours. So if you come late. Unapata ile kidogo umepata na uta reverse usikize baadaye. Eh uh, Jinet my dear sister I told you you become you'll understand Swahili. What I'm saying hallelujah is that now you know the Lord has spoken to me and said two hours. And these two hours we must use them properly. And I thank God because of you that is joining and those of you who are coming in and uh, you just align yourself. If you would like to know when I'm going live, it's important for you to write to me so that I can add you to the WhatsApp altar. So that you can be able to know when I'm coming live and when I'm you know, starting the broadcast. And you can always be standby. Because this is uh, war. You do not announce war. That we, the Kenyan military, tomorrow we shall be attacking Al-Shabaab at 5 p.m. Hey! That does not happen. The same way with the intercessor. The intercessor will not uh, will not allow themselves to be exposed. Even when you're in an active situation, you are praying about a particular situation. You don't tell everybody what the Holy Spirit is telling you. You use wisdom and knowledge. You know. I you know before I I, I sought the Lord for wisdom on this. You know, I approached somebody who I saw there was a problem, a big one, spiritually, in their life. And the Lord was showing it to me so clearly where they need to correct. The moment I started talking to the person, they defended themselves. They said, ah, 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 and they hung up on me. Ah! I said, Lord, what did I do wrong? I was coming for your sake. Then now this morning I'm praying. He tells me, leave them alone. Flee from such with such desires in the book of Corinthians says hey! I said Lord I will keep my focus on the 150 days of Psalms and on the lost that's my focus that is my focus the lost are there many of them shoe uh, um, shoe shiners car wash people petrol stations the people that you do not even think about 
they are there in your life already. And they talk to you every time. There are some people in Africa where you are supporting them. You send them money every time. You never prayed for them by name. Just, you have bought their names, you've already sent them money, you have their name, but you don't pray for them. You just keep talking to them, to taendelea, to taendelea kusaidiana. God wants you to pray that this person will be born again, that they will be transformed, that this person will serve God. Let's go to the throne room. Hallelujah. It says this. Ah, glory, glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus. It says, after this, I looked, and there before me was a door standing open. Standing open. In heaven. Uh, Eva, just, just remove the number from there and send it to me on the inbox. Just uh, for your own security and also for your for your data to be safe and all that. Just write to me inside the inbox so that I will keep it there. Just delete it from there and keep it in the inbox. That will be safer for you as well. It says, After this I looked and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. You just put it down then you can keep it away from there. Thank you Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. One of the other admins can help me with that. Let me delete this comment. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So where we go in uh, Revelation 4, it says, After this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven, and the voice I had first speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here. I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit. And there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby. A rainbow that shone like an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones. And seated on them were 24 elders, 20 and 4 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came Flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder. In front of the throne were seven lamps. Seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. In Isaiah 11, verse 6, the seven spirits of God are also mentioned there. Who what they are, if you don't know, spirit of revelation, spirit of the Lord, and so on. Also in front of the throne, there was what that looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center around the throne were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes, in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under the, its wings. Day and night they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Verse 9, Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to Him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the twenty and four elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their wing and have their, their being. And it goes like this. You are worthy, O Lord, and God to receive glory and honor and power. 
for you created rotting and by your will they were created and now they'll be oh you are worthy you are worthy oh lord and god to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and of their being revelation 4 the sounds around the throne room and the sights around the throne the sounds around the throne Hmm. One of those sounds is this one. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> like a trumpet like a shofar in the Hebrew this is a shofar a ram's horn he says that come up here and I will show you what must take place after this verse 2 is what we strive to do to remain in the spirit at once be in the spirit and stay in the spirit glory Stay in the spirit. Remain in the spirit. Hmm. That when you find yourself trying to get out of the spirit, you just start a chorus. Father, I declare that I love you. I declare my everlasting love for you. Oh, Rebosi, la la Father, I declare that I love you. Try singing after that. Try. Just try and see if it's possible. After four hours of being with the Lord, try doing a sin. It's not possible. The Holy Ghost Himself will convict your soul. You hey, It's not going to be possible. Even to put on just television. When you spend time, quality time with God, you will have no interest. Total zero. You want to be with God. You want more of Him. You want more, more, more. I want more. That, you know, you have already been given the silver and gold, but you are not going. You have already been given the influence, the favor, the strength for you to pray, but you are not going. Because of this, let me take you here to Exodus 34. Then you can understand these things uh, that we are talking about here. Exodus chapter 34, verse 9 and 10. He says this, Lord, if I have found favor in your eyes, he said, then let the Lord go with us. Although this is a stiff-necked people, forgive our wickedness and our sin and take us as your inheritance. Then the Lord said in verse 10, I am making a covenant with you before all your people. I will do wonders never been, never before done in any nation in the world. The people you live among will see how awesome is the work that I, the Lord, will do for you. The covenant of wonders. 
Hey, Jesus. The Lord bringing you as an intercessor to have covenant of wonders. I want you to pray for yourself now and tell God, Father, bring me to your covenant of wonders in the name of Jesus. Bring me to your covenant of wonders in the mighty name of Jesus. That God, you will give me strength by this covenant that you spoke to your servant Moses. I come according to your word. Now pray, pray, pray. Tell the Lord these things. Tell the Lord these things. Tell him. Exodus 34. Yeah, Then the Lord said, I'm making a covenant with you. Hey, may the Lord say that of a Malcolm David Sailor. Lord, make a covenant with me, Lord Jesus. I enter myself into you, Jesus. You are the covenant that I need. Ah, Father, I thank you that I, I stand in your covenant, my Father. Do wonders never been done before in any nation in the world. Let the people who live among see your awesome in the work that you do. Father, let your covenant of wonders locate my life. Oh, Rabba Solekes. Let your covenant of wonders locate my life, Lord. Let your covenant of wonders be my portion. Let your covenant of wonders be my portion. Let it be my portion. Let it be my portion. In this new season, Lord. Hallelujah. Of your divine favor. Lord God, may you guard me from every evil attack by your shield of favor. According to your word in Psalm 512. Lord, I pray for my viewers. That you cover them, you protect them. Bring them to the covenant of wonders. Bring them to the covenant, the covenant of wonders, Father. The Lord, every nation, we look and see the wonders of God that you have done in our time and in our generation. Oh Lord, bring me into a covenant of wonders. Bring me into a covenant of wonders. Lord, let your favor be evident today in everything I do. Everything I do, everywhere I go, let your covenant of wonders speak and announce me, even in advance, that this one carries my covenant. For I have found favor in your sight. I, my Lord, help me to walk victorious in everything I do. As I've chosen the path of intercession, chosen the path to know you more, you know, the scripture says this. It says that uh, respect his prophets and you you prosper. I, I watched a video from um, one of the prophets here in Africa. And he's warning Kenya to pray about um, the terrorist groups. They are regrouping. And we need to pray against them. And we thank God because... When God reveals these kind of things, He's able to deal with them in the realm of the Spirit Himself. So now we pray concerning that prophetic word over the nation. The Lord will cause the, the church in Garissa, in Moyale, in Mandera, Lord God in Siolo, in Masabit, Lord God around these areas down the coast in Lamu, Father God around the Kenyan Somali border, we pray even in, into Isili, we pray. God, even over areas that the enemy may have made advancement against our nation and even brought um, evil to come to regroup here for the sake of destroying the lives of people. Father, we pray that you expose, send, send among, the, uh, send among the, the police and the army, the spirit of Elisha that was able to tell what is happening in the bedroom of the enemies of Israel. Lord, I pray that you send new tactics over the anti-police, anti-terror anti police, that you send men and women of prayer in those areas that God, they may uncover this, the, the plans and the plots of these um, terrorist groups in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we go to the book of Colossians as we come to conclude and uh, 
We thank God for you who are in diaspora. We pray for you. We pray for the cover of the Spirit over you. We pray that you will pray more. We pray that God will give you grace to fast. You fast more. That um, as I challenge you, we'll be able to, by the grace of God, do a three-day Esther's fast. No water, no food. Three days. In my illness, I was put through one for I think five days. The only food I was getting was through my uh, the drip. But God did a miracle. And I came from that kind of a scenario. I was supposed to move to pipes, putting food in my body. But God sent an angel. God said, that was not a normal nurse. Uh -uh. The way he held my head, uh -uh. I don't think that was a normal nurse. He didn't speak much, but he was very authoritative in PPEs. And he came and he held my head and, you know, removed my mask a little while. Actually, he did not remove it gently. He, after removing, because my, my oxygen level would drop just like a speedometer. The moment you remove that ventilator, my oxygen would go start going from 90. It starts dropping. And even going to that 90 was a miracle. Because next to me was a Chinese man who later passed on who they had put the best ventilator in that hospital. And his oxygen level kept, I could hear the doctors talking, and they were saying it's keeping to change, it's changing. It's not being consistent. So they are putting the best oxygen in him, but it's still not coming consistent. Sometimes it's going up, his heart level is going very high, sometimes it's going almost off. And you see, that man held me on the back of my head, and he put porridge in my mouth that porridge opened the door for food the next time i remember the next nurse came and said i was at a uh, what did she say she that one said uh, i'm used to my patients having pipes that are feeding them so that is what she was coming to check on my pipes do i have pipes but god had sent me an angel he, he looked like a nurse He's, he was a nurse but he put food in my stomach Otherwise, my stomach would start bringing constipation and what, and some of the COVID complications that people are dying of is not just the sickness of the lungs, but even small things like constipation can kill a man. Constipation, just not being able to pass things through your intestines, that in itself can cause somebody to just go like that. So God caused this man to just put poor pour food in me and you know uh, I remember how it was oh my god that was God loves his people and that's why we'll serve him tutamtumikia tutamtumikia mungu kabisa na tuwendi kuchokozana apana tunayenda malia na tutuma so do not expect me to see me doing things that I've not been told of the Lord if the Lord tells me to go and do something in the middle of, right in the middle of the city of New York. Right there in the middle, from Africa, Kenya, with my trumpet, I will fly to New York. Tomorrow you'll see me in New York. See Mission Monday in New York. How did he get here? Hi. Where did he get the transport? Hi. God has his own secret ravens that bring meat. Be one of them. If God speaks to you to give towards this ministry, Release yourself. Do not even try to uh, argue with him. Because the Lord, what, I, what I've understood in the area of giving, one thing that I've noticed about him is that he speaks so subtly. He speaks and then he goes quiet. Sometimes he's silent. Totally. And you must learn to listen to the silence and interpret what he's saying. He'll tell you, you want to go on Monday. We want to go on Sunday. No. The covenant day is Monday. That's when you will go. And he says that's what is going to happen. Then you have to align yourself to his purposes and his plans. So I bless God. I give him the praise. I honor him. I adore him. He's a good God. He's a good God. I remember once we had gone uh, into a market area. Let me give you a testimony about giving. So, you know, I got to this place, I was going to Kisumu, and um, 
I stopped. These women all came running at the same time with sweet potatoes. I already had a large supply of sweet potatoes in my trunk. I'd already been to Chaberia and uh, I prayed with the traders there. About 14 of them had gotten saved there. Then the Holy Spirit said, buy something from them. Break curses of you know people that are just uh, stopping by and not buying anything or buying from one because they prefer and then causing a problem over them. We bought from all of them. Then, you know, this time we stop and there are about five women. All of them ran to the car. And I uh, began to share with them the gospel. And then I tell them, all these uh, sweet potatoes, actually they were fresh. Some of them had been just cleaned. They looked nice. Then I said, ah, Tatuzi, I'm Siogope. Then I said to them, uh, so how do I send money? Can I send it to you? Said, Apana, and you? Ay, Apana, si tuma kwa namba yangu. Then I asked you, I said, ay, fanya ibi, tuma kwa Then all these women had credit with the, with the mobile company. It's something they call Fuliza. So this is a service that allows them into credit. So the Holy Spirit said to me, start to pick your pen. Pick the pen. The first one said, Fuliza, yako ni angapi? They said, I wrote it down. Yako ni I wrote it down. Yako ni I wrote it down. I was asking myself, God, I, is this, is this me or is this you? I wrote down all five of them. Then I looked at what they were selling for me. I said, okay, can we get a discount on what you are selling? Then he said, ah, who knows she, no problem. So I did the calculation with the discounted rate. And then I put the total down here. I looked at what I had on my phone. I could be able to handle it. So that you think missions is just about getting. Sometimes you give. You must give. Sometimes you give a lot. Even what you don't have. The Lord allows when you go to listen to him. And he allows you to listen and to do exactly what he wants you to do. So I put down the total. Just about when you are about to finish. Another lady came also. Then they spoke to her in mother tongue. Said, hey, this is a pastor. He's paying for us our full leader. So the lady said, Ata mimi ni konayo. So now I asked myself, Lord, I've already finished with this one. What about this one? The Lord told me the principle in First Samuel chapter 30. He said, those who went and those who stayed, they received the same measure. I said to her, wewe unapaswa utoe utoe viazitamu nyeupe. I just gave that instruction from the spirit. I, you see, the car is blocked. I could not see what she's holding in the bucket. I could not see. So when I opened the door, she put the bucket of her potatoes inside the car, sweet potatoes. And they were not red, they were white. I knew this is of the Lord. So we went ahead and paid for them. And also paid for her debt. So these six women... Receive a random customer they have never seen who buys their goods and pays their debt to the full. And then now they don't need any, he doesn't need anything, he does not need you to follow him, he does not need you to go to church. Then the Holy Spirit said, Pray for them now that they will prosper. Pray that they will start. The Holy Spirit gave a wisdom, he said, Now start. Every I said, okay, you, you all of you had this much money, okay, good. Now, this is what God is saying. Every single day, because I think on average, they were, what they were doing um, on average, they can be able to cover if they are able to plan. So right there, I prayed for them and introduced a system. I said, okay, the person who came last, that's the first one to benefit this coming week. Just keep 100 shillings. Just collect 100 shillings for each one of you. And on Friday, give it to the person at the end. So the amount of money the person would get at the end of the week would allow them not to have the debt because the debt was not uh, so much. But to them, it was a big mountain, big mountain that they could not move. But the Lord moved it by sending me there. That particular, those women, I'm yet to go to them. 
And I thank God the country is open. So the time will open, the Lord will open for me, the time for me to go to that place called Nyapolo. Just near, uh, when you're coming out, when, when you're coming from, from um, Chaberia, that area, Chabera, that area, that area there, on your way to Kisumu. As the Lord, because the Lord now said something different about Kisumu, going there. So when I go there, I will be going specifically to Nyapol. These women were left in amazement. And I have their numbers, so I'll call them and find out how they are doing. So Mission Monday is, a, is something that requires your support and partnership. It requires your prayers. Because the things that God is doing in our time are things that are amazing. We glorify. One of them is that he rescues and he saves. He makes alive in the name of Jesus. He pulled me out of the jaws of COVID-19 in Africa, a place where they are saying we don't have good health care. They got me, God got me out of that place to come back to the nations, to tell the nations that indeed he rescues and he saves and to remain in the spirit. Remain in the spirit. We have to finish with Colossians. I, Paul, an apostle of Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to God's holy people in Colossae, the faithful brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people. The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that was come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world just as it has been doing among you since the day you had it and truly understood God's grace. You learned it from Epaphras, our dear, our fellow dear servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf. And who has told us of your love in the spirit. Now, chap uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. For you intercessor, receive strength from this verse. It says, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf. So you need to pray, Lord, make me a faithful minister in the Lord, in Jesus' name. And then also pray for love in the spirit. There is love in the flesh and there is love in the spirit. So desire love in the spirit that you may be able to love more, pray more. You know, you can spend time praying more and make sure your children are part of the prayers so that they can learn. And you, later on in life they can say, Mama taught me how to pray. They can say, Mama used to pray. Verse 9, for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you we continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. So that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. Hallelujah. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Verse 15. The son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, Things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. There is a description of the spirit. The spirit contains all those things. Rulers, authorities, powers, visible things, invisible things, then the spirit. Then verse 17, he is before all things. And in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead. 
so that in everything he might have the supremacy. Verse 19. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Verse 21. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, establish and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you had that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Now I rejoice. I rejoice in what I am suffering for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become its servant by commission, by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness. Father, help us to present the word of God in its fullness. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, help us to fulfill. Hey, help us to fulfill the word of God in his fullness. In the name of Jesus, help us to present the word of God in his fullness. As intercessors, as preachers, in the name of the Lord. Amen. Verse 26. The mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to God's people. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles, the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory, is the mystery. Hallelujah! The glorious riches of the mystery. Wachana na dollar, wachana na pesa. Tafuta mystery. Tafuta the mystery. Look for the mystery of the Lord. Hallelujah! The hope of glory. He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this very end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. I pray for you, my dear friend and myself, that God will grant us energy, Christ so powerfully works in us. Father, we thank you for the time of prayer, the time of reading your word, the time of sounding the trumpet, the time of remaining in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for our friends that we've been able to meet and gather in the nations of the earth and the time that you've given unto us to pray. Our Father, we love you so much. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to remain in your presence, O oh God. And now we pray for the weak we pray that this week will give us great success, full of many, 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 many souls. Thank you that I return to work this week. Thank you, Lord, that indeed you have healed me totally and restored me from every sickness and disease. Thank you, Lord, that I am a witness. And thank you, Lord, that I am your sign to the nations. In Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you for all of you joined. We we'll see you again same time as the Lord helps us. Hallelujah. Your name is and you are. Your name is and you are. Jesus is higher than the rest. God bless you. Shalom. <laughs>